that we can test. In the presence hamstring of the muscles, and we can the hamstring muscles are expected to exert percentages the of their max in these on posterior positions, pelvic. such as supine. Once this pattern is established, the hamstring action is constantly mean reinforced. That the training stops there. while the abdominal uh, muscle action is reduced. We're instructing the athlete to feel the imbalance in action contributes in to the an imbalance in strength with the hamstring muscles testing strong neuromuscularly and the abdominal muscles testing weak. When he's doing straight the leg raising in the supine position so this requires the assessment the synergy better opportunities of the abdominal to make connections. and the contralateral hip extensor standpoint. muscles to and counteract the pelvis gaining anterior tilting action to of the hip flexor themselves sports specific movements so this is pretty interesting like notice in order for him to get maximum hip extension, he's got to rotate. See how much rotation takes place? And when you think about that, uh, think about the amount of stress that happens every time he gets into hip extension. He has to rotate at the spine. Look at that. Rotating in efforts to drive hip extension. So we're gonna, we're gonna practice learning how to get hip extension uh, with limited rotation, knowing, you know, this is probably something that's either learned probably biomechanical, maybe structurally, like he's tight anteriorly. Nonetheless, dominance uh, of hamstring it's something muscles that we over abdominal muscles. And we kind of understand what the pattern of behavior is. The abdominal muscles uh, as a result and the hip extensor uh, muscles something natural like getting have synergistic you know, actions as a force so couple instructed him to that tilts the pelvis posterior. flush against the bench when working properly box. and this is the, the anterior extension that he gets just abdominal muscles actually. pull upward so it's potentially on the like anterior learned, pelvis hey in order for me to get extension focus and on the rotation. hamstring muscles pull Whereas downward here, we're gonna try on the ischial tuberosity of the pelvis thus in that acting plane. as a force couple up, that tilts hold, the pelvis posteriorly pelvis square to the box. Clinical observation suggests that the individual when with weak we abdominal muscles uses the contralateral uh, hip extensor muscles to stabilize the pelvis the during uh, the straight leg raise to, show that we don't to a greater extent to than the individual who has strong abdominal muscles. Gaining some pretty good insights as to load. So Right now, it's just the load of his body weight with his upper extremity or trunk supported on the ground. So we get a consistent load here, and we can dose it by adding a little bit more weight on his pelvis uh, through the means of a dumbbell, um, chains, whatever it may be. But I like this position. One is because uh, we're facilitating knee flexion with hip extension, which is what occurs during that running gait. Um, but we also get a little bit of action at the foot. And right now I have him on just heels, like feet completely fat up against the wall. But uh, I usually instruct them to get up on the balls of their feet, the heels elevated. That makes it a little bit more challenging. So we're just gonna hold it here for now. And then maybe the next set will elevate heels off. This is the next set. And right now, right probably around 90 degrees of knee flexion. Uh, we're gonna hold it there. This is easier than 30 degrees of knee flexion with this same um, movement or exercise. So we're progressing uh, in terms of intensity. So this is lower intensity. Counterbalancing than force if he was couples. Extended out just a of bit the more, trunk and knees hip core muscles. In a, the abdominal muscles pull upward of 30 on the degrees. anterior pelvis, but nonetheless, he's and the hamstring able to do this. No pain. Down on the issue of the of About the pelvis, acting as a force couple for now. to rotate uh, the pelvis he's doing double leg. and just to see if there's any difference the between spine. each one. The back two reps here, muscles three reps, pull upward to drive as much. on the pelvis, and the hip flexor muscles pull downward 
on the pelvis acting as a force couple. And then we're gonna go one at a time. The pelvis anteriorly and extend the lumbar spine. Dominance of hamstring muscles over luteus maximus muscle. The pattern of excessive so dominance. Do double leg, of one just kind of give of him an opportunity to kind of warm up onto the one of the side. muscular force couple can lead so, to just the variation the doesn't have to be this muscle. way. For, so we've got time, so overuse we syndrome. can kind of progress into the. For these. example, the individual right, single leg with an exaggerated sway back posture. Drive into it. Who stands in hip joint thing here is just like the angle that he's forming. Has diminished so right contour now, again, I'm not of the gluteal too muscle. Too concerned, I just want to see hip extension and the flexion. Development I'm not muscle. particular about like the angle of the knee at this moment. The sway back position of the upper back with the sway forward position. Good. Here's what you're gonna do for me, it's gonna be a little bit new. With so you're gonna get up, hip, and, and you're gonna rotate your pelvis side to side. The line All right, just to get the inside and outside markedly of your hands. Posterior so drive up, to the hip one joint. leg, good, rotate in, rotate out, good. Any, any difference there? It. Yep, and just trying to push down as you do that. So try to create as much intensity as you can. Rotate in, rotate out. So just understanding that the hamstring will work dynamically, not just in the sagittal plane, but frontal as well. Uh, knowing that you know, these things don't work uh, robotically. Uh, you can go both. Let's go both at the same time first, try to hold it in the train. Okay, just focusing on his right side now, but just having the left side work along with it. And we're just looking for control here. Progressing in just the right leg. Good, left leg up off the ground there. There we go. Last set, last rep of this set. Trying to maintain that. Good control. There we go. Definitely working here. He did well doing uh, max or 55% of his max intensity uh, with him just remaining in that fixed plane of motion. Now we're gonna ask him to do 35% uh, of his max while rotating his pelvis. So just drive up, hips up, right leg. He's gonna rotate side to side. Try to maintain in the green though. That's gonna be the challenge. Right there. Just try to focus on just the green first. Good, now rotate. There we go. Better. Yeah, that's fine. Thank you. Appreciate it. When an individual yep. with a sway back posture performs hip extension in the prone position, so he's the timing and control within that muscle set intensity is inferred while rotating his hips. Contour. So this is just a step up from just that the hands hey, stay in this one position before and maintain a fixed intensity. Muscle. This is dynamic Performing a neuromuscular muscle control. Test on the gluteus maximus, the muscle usually confirms that the muscle is weak. This pattern is the reverse of that observed in the individual with a lordotic posture. This observation suggests that the timing of recruitment can vary between synergists and that it can be reflected in a decrease in the strength of the less dominant muscle.